In the first video on the 1988 XRV650, we got the bike running after six years in storage. In the second video, we will replace the aftermarket fork boots, flush and replace all the fluids, fix some sticky switches and some electrical gremlins, then take the bike on its first shakedown ride. Okay, so next thing on the XRV is we're going to change out the fork uh, boots. So we've got some nice new old stock boots here. We're going to take these off, which are, uh, yeah, they're an aftermarket boot. Um, so we're going to get the forks out. I'm going to jack the bike up on its frame, and then we'll drop the forks out, front wheel and forks, and get those changed. Before I can torque down the fork retaining bolts, I set the height of the forks with my calipers. So I'm going to now uh, change out the brake fluid um, <clears throat> so we can just see here yeah so there's the reservoir is pretty much empty. Um, the fluid doesn't look too bad, but uh, we're going to replace it anyway because uh, we don't know exactly how old it is. So what I'm going to do, just use the uh, vacuum tool, my vacuum pump. I'm just going to suck out the, evacuate the fluid from the reservoir, <clears throat> and then I'll put this on the caliper and actually um, evacuate all of the fluid from the caliper side. And then what we'll do, I'll, I'll show you uh, basically, once we've done that, um, I'll start to fill the reservoir from the top, continue to pull um, the fluid through with the vacuum pump. And I'll just keep basically drawing it through until I'm happy that, uh, you know, fresh fluid through the caliper.
So you can see now uh, it's starting to pump a uh, pool fluid through from the uh, clean fluid from the master, brake master. So all I'm doing is applying a vacuum to the bleed nipple and then uh, I'm depressing the rear brake pedal and then the vacuum is pulling the fluid through. And uh, yeah, I'll just pull a little bit more through, but pretty much um, we can see now clean fl fluid in the bottom uh, of the pot. And then um, what I'll do now is just uh, bleed the air, remaining air out of the system, uh, the kind of standard way, which is just pump up the brake master to pressurize the system and then just crack the bleed nipple and allow whatever air is remaining to come out. But generally when I'm using the vacuum pumps like this, there's very little air left in the system to have to, uh, to purge. The, uh, the rear brake bled so now I'm just going to do the same on the front I'll evacuate the master first brake master uh, and then um, evacuate the caliper and then feed clean fluid fluid through Check the air filter. So, yeah, good job we did that. that uh, that's not a good colour. It's not the colour it's meant to be, so we will definitely be replacing that. It's, I think while, while that's draining, I'm also just going to top up the... Um, in the expansion tank because that is also empty. Okay, so let's check on the air filter at the same time.
Okay, so actually, uh, air, f air filter looks uh, pretty good. In fact, that looks new. Chain also looks good. Yeah, I think that looks that looks like it's been changed not that long ago as well. So it looks like uh, basically all we've got to do now is do the oil change. It's from a maintenance perspective. I'm not exactly sure what weight oil this bike takes so I'll need to look that up and of course we'll change the oil filter at the same time okay okay and in with some fresh GN4 from uh, Honda. Perfect. Okay, so that's the oil changed. We've checked the air filter. We've already replaced the coolant. So that's, uh, that's all the maintenance parts done. So uh, yeah, now all that's left is uh, to get the rest of the bodywork back on. Wash the bike and then get the bodywork back on and uh, take it for a test ride. Okay, so before I put the bodywork back, I'd noticed that the turn signal and high-low beam switches were sticking, which I find is a common issue on Hondas of this age due to the grease they use from factory solidifying. So a good clean quickly solves the issue. I'd also spotted that the warning lights had been inserted into the wrong housing. So remove the front cowl to pull them and rearrange. Next, I replace the O-rings on the fuel level senders and pet cocks, then treat the rust on the tank with a liberal coating of rust prohibitor. Now we can install the tank, check fuel is getting to the carbs, and wrap up the installation of the bodywork.
And with the first shakedown ride successfully under our belt, we can confidently declare this amazing and rare modern classic fit for the road once again. After almost seven years in hibernation. Thank you to its owner for letting us bring it back to life and may you enjoy many grin-inducing miles to come. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more to come. Bye for now.